Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial on HECRAS. And in this lesson, I'm going to be talking about the unsteady flow analysis, specifically setting up initial conditions. All right, so what I have on the screen here is my HECRAS. It's a very simple river system with just one reach, one river, and three cross sections and one storage area. All right, so what we're going to be dealing with in this exercise or this lesson, excuse me, is you go up to the edit menu select unsteady flow data and then we have four tabs across the top boundary conditions initial conditions meteorological data and observed data this second tab here for initial conditions is what i'm going to be focusing on in this lesson the user must set and save initial conditions before running a steady flow simulation what i have on the screen here are a few different options for setting those initial conditions and the most common option is the default, which is already selected here with this radio button, enter initial flow distribution. Initial conditions consist of flow and stage information at each cross section, as well as elevations for any storage areas defined within the system. So as you can see here in the top table, we have cross section data. And then in the lower table is data for storage areas and 2D flow areas. So for instance, if I knew that the initial flow at my cross section at River Station 2000 here in my diagram was say 2700 CFS, I could just type that in right there. And if I had information about the flow rate, the initial flow rate at other cross sections, I could click this add RS button to add a river station. And then I could just type on type 1000, click OK, do it again to get um, and then double click zero that would add my cross section at river station 1000 and at uh, zero respectively okay so i have those in here as well i could just type in the same values or type in different initial flow values if they happen to be different these second two cross section data are optional they're not required only the top of each reach is required for initial value however if these values are left blank including the cross section at the top of the reach, then what the user's manual says is that the data from the boundary conditions will be used. So over here, there's a tab for boundary conditions. We were just looking over here at initial conditions. I currently don't have any boundary conditions set, but in the previous lesson, lesson 23, I go through uh, talking about how to set boundary conditions as well. So if your initial conditions are set to zero, they will by default be read in from boundary conditions. And when that happens, then the flow rate through any specific cross section in any reach would simply be the sum of the flows that were assigned at the boundary um, upstream of that particular reach segment. So that is um, what the user's manual says about reaches. Down below we, that we have storage area. So we want to set the initial volume of a storage area. We're talking about lakes, ponds, and so on. I have one storage area right here in my map. If I had more, I would see more storage areas in this table. Now, if I look at the storage area and I look at the geometry, I could just edit the storage area. We have a base elevation of 350 feet. I just made this data up. And then uh, as the water surface increases from 350, we have more and more volume. So I bring that up because in the initial conditions, if I wanted to set the initial condition to 350, that would represent zero volume. In fact, I don't have to even look at the geometry of the storage area itself. I can just click on this button here, import minimum storage area elevations, and that will automatically populate the initial elevation, which has a minimum or a zero volume. So if I click that, boom, 350, the number just popped into place. If this value for the initial elevation is left blank like that, then it will automatically be set to the minimum volume. However, if this particular storage area is connected to another body of water, such as a channel through a lateral structure, and it's hydro hydrologically connected, then that elevation value will be set to the elevation of the water that it's hydrologically connected to, such as the water in the channel on the other side of the lateral structure. So it kind of makes it easy to set the initial conditions, uh, the initial elevation of storage areas if it happens to be hydrologically connected just uh, leave it at blank 
Okay, so that's uh, the most common option here of um, entering initial flow distributions. The other option here the user manual mentions is to use a restart file. So if you click on restart file name, radio button, the other areas we were looking at go grayed out because they're not considered. And then what you would do here is select the dot restart file. This option is used when running long simulations that need to be broken up into multiple simulation runs that have a shorter duration. So the end results, the file restart file name data. If I open this up, it should ask me to yeah navigate to a .rst file. I don't have any right now, but uh, that's what you would do. In that way, the output from the first file will be used as the input to the second file. The output to the second file will be used as the input to the third file and so on. Below that, we have a option to prior water surface file name or WS file name. So if I click on that, then um, it would also ask me to navigate to a dot key number number dot HDF file. So I happen to find one here. This is an output dot HDF file. And then after that, I would select a uh, profile, profile one, two, or three in this case, because those are the three different profiles associated with this previous run. However, the user's manual provides no information about this option. So uh, without tinkering around a little bit more, I can't say any more about this particular option. The user's manual does mention a third option though, and that is if you go up to file and then set initial conditions, flow and stage for 1D flow from previous output file. Once that option is selected, we have this dialog box that popped up, then all the flows and stages from that plan and profile will be set to the initial conditions of the current unsteady flow file. So we have what would be a list of different plans and profiles. I haven't ran any simulations in this file already, this plan file. So I don't have any data to show you on that one. All right, and then one final uh, word from the user's manual that's germane to this topic is if you go up to the options menu. So this options menu sometimes applies to boundary conditions. Sometimes it applies to initial conditions. For the initial conditions, if you click on internal river station initial stages, what you can do is set the initial stage or elevation of an internal cross section. So for instance, right now it's set to 2000. This is a river A, reach one, my only river, my only reach. And then the river station I can select is zero, 1000 or 2000. So the only internal uh, river station would be 1000 in this case. So if I click this add an internal stage, it populates the river, the reach and the river station. And then I would go ahead and type in the elevation, so I'll say 37 feet, for instance, and then go ahead and click OK. Now that doesn't show up on my interface here or even in the boundary conditions, but if I go back to options, I do have a check mark next to that internal river station initial stage. So if I click that, boom, there's 37 feet that are saved and would be used in the unsteady flow calculations. All right, well, that was it for this lesson. We talked about the initial conditions that are associated with unsteady flow in PECRAS.